Iodo at your service. Today's video is technically part one of how I make my Runa cloak, but it's really just a deep dive into how to work out the best Runa cloak dimensions for a fantasy adventurer. So while it's not necessarily going to be everyone's cup of tea, I am hoping that it will answer a lot of the questions people have been asking me over the last year or so about how I made this cloak. Okay, so a lot of you are probably thinking, isn't it a bit overdue for this video? Because I've had this cloak for like an entire year. Yes, that is true. I have been editing old footage because I've got masses of old footage for how I made it. All the footage in this video was in fact filmed before my Equipment for a Fantasy Adventurer video about the Runa Cloak, which I'll link. And it might be worth watching that one first so that you know all of the advantages and disadvantages and functions of a cloak which will help you understand most of the stuff in this video. So yeah, I admit it, it's old footage. There's quite a few things in this that's more than a little dodgy. This does end up being a three-part video. The first one will be about dimensions, the second one will be about cutting and hemming the fabric, and the third one will be about the uh, fancy linen border, which I did. And I do mention living anachronism a couple of times. Kramer, I am so sorry I mispronounced your name all the way through this. I hope you're not offended. But on a different note, the channel has just reached 1,000 subscribers. That's so awesome! And I want to thank absolutely everybody who's subscribed to help this happen. I didn't think it ever would, but alas, it has. Now I really did want to make a 1000 subs video to celebrate the occasion, but life has been really busy lately and leading up to Christmas is always busy time of year anyway, so I haven't had time. But I still want to make something. It might not happen though, we'll see. Anyway, back to my dodgy old footage video. So it's quite likely that if you're watching this video, that you're watching this video because you want a Runa cloak, because you've seen how awesome they are. And the person who has been talking about a Runa cloak quite a lot is Kramer over on Living Anachronism. And I'll link his video about cloaks for fantasy adventurers. And I'll also link his video about the dimensions of his Runa cloak because that's what mine is based on. I'll put up on the screen what shape a Runa cloak is so that you understand what I'm talking about. Now Kramer's uh, Runa cloak is 3 foot 7 wide by 5 foot 4 long and the slit in it is 3 foot long. Those dimensions should appear as well. You'll notice that the slit goes a little way past half. The slit goes 8 inches further than the halfway point and that is actually for a reason because before I cut into my great big piece of wool I did actually want to find out what dimensions might be best. Now. His cloak is actually a top man cloak. A couple of years ago, I think about five years ago, they were very fashionable in the UK, so a lot of clothing retailers did make different versions of them. And although his cloak is very ideal dimensions for a fantasy adventurer, I did want to check that I might not be missing something, so I did some experiments. This is curtain backing fabric. It's really, really cheap and it's great for making patterns out of to test stuff out. What I've actually done is I actually ended up making quite a large number of Runa cloaks. So, as you can see, that is a Runa cloak. And it has about two pounds worth of fabric in it, so I don't mind cutting it up to do an experiment. I started off, I made one exactly the same as Kramer's. What I found was that it actually didn't seem to be quite long enough. Obviously at this point I have no practical testing because I haven't actually made it yet, so I haven't tried it in the field, but I've got a fairly good idea what I wanted to do. So what I did then do was I looked up different manufacturers that make them. There's a couple of companies on Etsy that make them out of tweed wool fabrics. Um, so I looked at the dimensions they use because they say in the descriptions on the images and I also looked at dimensions on things like Alpaca Warehouse. They do some quite good knitted Runa cloaks which would be very similar to the one that Grandma got from Topman because that would be knitted fabric. What I found was quite interesting was that the Topman cloak actually appears to be quite unique because the width of it is much narrower than most of the others. Just for a um, demonstration point of view, 
The width of this is exactly the same as Cramer's dimensions for the Topman Runa Cloak. This is a Runa Cloak from a ladies fashion retailer that my mum got quite a few years ago, probably in the same time when they were fashionable. The width of the Topman Cloak actually only just goes past half because that's the centre seam of the cloak from the other retailer which I can't remember what it was it might have been Matalan but that is enormous in width so honestly for you guys who are making one of these basically any dimension will work some dimensions are better for some things than others but if you've got a piece of fabric lying around and you want to make one and it's not quite the right size to make the dimensions that I'm going to use or that the top man cloak is or anything like that then just make it anyway because it will work I am going to show you this the width of this is as long as my arms are so this goes right down to my sleeve now at first I thought oh that would be great it would mean if I made this out of wool so that it's more waterproof it would keep the rain off better but when I experimented with this what this actually means is that I can't wear it with a backpack and I can't wear it in most of the configurations that you can wear a runic cloak that is narrower and the reason for that is because if it goes too far past your elbows it actually traps your arms and it reduces your ability to have good mobility so no chance of adventuring stuff like sword fights and whatever else you might happen to want to do it's going to get in the way and to be honest this is going to get in the way more than most ordinary cloaks honestly i think that the top man cloak is actually somewhere around the area of absolutely perfect for a fantasy adventurer which i find to be very surprising i don't know whether it's just random or because somebody actually thought about it so this one here is actually different dimensions to the top man cloak but it's exactly the same width and as you can see you have more freedom of movement with your arms and if you wear a backpack it doesn't trap your arms like the other one does i guess then we go on to what did i change from the dimensions of the original top man cloak to get this which is the cloak that i'm going to make and that is after experimentation I thought that it should be longer and the reason it should be longer is because once it's hitched up inside a belt if you make it into the tunic configuration then it doesn't come down your back far enough to keep your legs dry. So I added a little bit of length but the other thing that I did is when I added a bit of length the cloak I ended up with had the slit go halfway and that's when I discovered why again all points for the top man cloak which the front of it is longer than the back of it by eight inches. No, his goes four inches past halfway. The eight inches number I use all the way through the video and I kind of messed up because the eight inches comes from the fact that I decided that the cloak should hang eight inches lower on the front than it does on the back when you're wearing it. And then I got my notes mixed up, so my mistake. Now that means that there's more weight on the front of it which means it doesn't fall off and it also means that if you flip it behind your back the back of it doesn't hang down far enough if the slit only ends halfway so it doesn't actually stay on on its own and you actually end up needing to pin it which is quite annoying so what I ended up with was mine the front of it is eight inches ish longer than the back and that seemed to be just about right Ideally with a cloak you don't want it to hang down too much more than a few inches below your knee because if it hangs down more than a few inches below your knee you can trip over it while walking uphill. So that's my dimensions. Now I'm going to give you just a tiny little bit of information about how to choose your own dimensions. From my experimentation, what I ended up deciding was that the optimum is actually so that when you hold your arms out to your sides wearing the cloak, it comes maybe about three inches past your elbow. 
that means that when you flip it over your back like that so that it covers your foot like hood mantle would and you lift your arm up in front of you the, the cloak is pretty much on the point of your elbow so my elbow is there and for length so long as it isn't longer than maybe two inches past your knee at the front when it's diagonal so that's where the point comes down to not where the flat bit comes down to the flat bit comes down to about two inches above my knee you should be okay and that pretty much determines the length of the back of the cloak because the front of the cloak has to be at least six inches longer than the back because otherwise it doesn't stay on work out your front length and then you take six inches off of the length of the slit and that will be your back length and that should work best for you i'll just finish with this note i went to quite a lot of effort to work out the best possible dimensions for a runa cloak made out of a heavy non-stretchy tweed wool and for my climate aka to keep the rain off for someone of my size who goes adventuring in forests that is quite specific and your needs will probably be quite different to that so this isn't a perfect guide to making the perfect runa cloak it's just what i did Please use scrap fabric to test out your own design first and don't be afraid to change stuff and let me know what works best for you. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope it answered some questions and I will see you in the next video.